Another winter in Glendarroch. A third. I suppose it's not the place I don't like so much as the people. Lachlan and Taylor and all their smug farming pals. I owe them one for that episode at the Norlock. Then there's that big goon in Verdarek. I owe him one too for laying one on me at the market. But I can wait. My turn will come. Things don't change much. That old gossip Mrs. Max still spreading malice. And the Blairs. I'll never let them know it. But it's a damned nuisance not being able to get my provisions at the store. Well, I better go. I'll be late for the horse sales. I hope I don't run into that stuck-up bitch Fiona Cunningham. There's another one of a few scores to settle with. I was afraid you might say that. So how do you feel? Stretchy. I think I prefer being a city gentleman. Well, I know the horse market isn't exactly your scene, but I'm glad you were able to manage up for it. Are you actually proposing to buy one of these brutes? I think about it often enough. That's about as far as it goes. As far as it can go. No, the estate isn't on a sound enough financial footing for us to afford the luxury of buying horses. In time, perhaps? Maybe. You know, Rory, I wish I had lived in my grandfather's day, when an estate like Glendarroch would have run at a profit and allowed us a reasonably good living. Some might say that... We you... don't do too badly. Yes, point taken. I didn't make it. Well, even if we can't go galloping across the moors together, I'm glad you're here. I haven't seen an awful lot of you lately, have I? I've hardly had time to turn around and catch myself by surprise. I suppose that's good news and bad. Perhaps I should make the effort to come and see you more often. Oh, at any other time, great. At this particular time, I'd hardly have a minute to talk to you. Oh, when's this uh, frenzied state of affairs going to stop, then? Hard to say, really. There's no sign of it letting up in the immediate future. Shouldn't we be on our way? Yes, yes, I think so. <sighs> Finished, Archie? Eh? Oh, well, uh, maybe half a cup of us in the left. What? I thought you asked if I wanted my cup freshened. No, I didn't. Oh. Well, do you? Ah, well, maybe... Uh, Just half a cup if there's any left. Is this rewiring job going to take you long, Archie? Ah, well, I'll tell you now, Alice. You see, this is the kind of job where the thinking time is very important. It's not the sort of job you want to rush at. You know, maybe you should slow down a bit, Archie. Hmm? I mean, you've only been sitting thinking about it for the last half an hour. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. It's as soon as I finish this, Bob, then the grease lightning. <laughs> Oh, I... Oh, here. I saw wee Donald coming out of this school yesterday. What a change in him he is. Ah, he's fairly growing. Ah, is that? <laughs> and he's doing well at school. Is he? Still, what does a crofter need with education, eh? I mean, beyond a certain point, it's a waste of time. Unless, of course, a laddie wants to be a skilled tradesman like myself. Had it not crossed your mind that maybe Donald won't be a crofter when he grows up? He might even have the intelligence to be a water bailiff. Oh, well, that might be an improvement of a sort. Eh? Oh, I have even higher hopes for the boy than that. It could be a, a doctor. A doctor? Or a, a vet. Oh. Not in the same class as a skilled tradesman like yourself, I'll grant you. Uh, have I said something to offend somebody? <laughs> no, Archie. Oh. And now that you've finished your tea, maybe you can tell me when well, you're going to be finished. finished. Uh, or even get started, Archie. Well, that's like I said, you're uh, not going to be too happy about the place being in a wee bit of a mess for a while. How long? You can't rush a rewiring job, Alice, especially when the old one is in the state yours is in. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Bad? I've never seen worse. Half of it is bare wire, Bob, bare wire. You're lucky the place has they caught fire. Your cousin? Well, second cousin, really. Family used to live in Ochtan, moved south about ten years ago. 
I haven't seen Jennifer since we were kids. You'll be pleased to see them then. I don't know. I suppose so. Don't really know her, you see. My families were never that close, and after we moved away, well, we just sort of lost touch. Nice of you to invite her to come and stay then. I didn't. She invited herself. We got a letter from her last week asking if she and her baby could come and stay for a while. I didn't even know she was married. It's a bit rare to have a baby in the house. So what age is it? She, just a few months, apparently. Oh, all oh, right, all right. Restrain your enthusiasm, Isabel. You'll be off the steps. Oh, what's the matter, Mr. Blair? Don't you like babies? Oh, I love them. Preferably fried. Oh, pay no attention to him, Sheila. He's been a sour puss since he got up this morning. <laughs> Me? You know, he was the original doting dad when Jimmy was born. Forever picking him up and looking at him. <laughs> Only because I could never figure out which end was which. Wheeling him up and down the street. Which isn't easy if you don't have a pram. <laughs> oh, baby Sheila, I can take them all, leave them, but I'd sooner take them and leave them for somebody else. Well, I hope you don't feel that way about wee Karen. Jennifer sounds crazy about her in her letter. Here, you'll need to watch yourself, you know. Why? Well, nothing like having a baby around for making a woman feel broody. Oh, God. It's a nice bit of forest pony, isn't it? Mm, I was just about to say the same thing. No, you weren't. The only assessment you have ever made in horse flesh, Rory, is evaluating shares in a cat food company. That was uncalled for and unkind. I have ridden the darn things. Ever thought of taking it up seriously? Nope. I much prefer driving a cart. That way there's only one wheel working at a time. Yours? Correct. You know, in your own quiet way, you do like to be boss, don't you? I like to be in control of my own life, if that's what you mean. And I haven't been since I met you. Oh? Have you never thought of the danger being a part creates? To what? To our relationship. What danger did you have in mind? You might meet someone else near a home someday. And who's this eligible someone I'm likely to meet in Glendara? A tall, dark stranger could come riding through any day. Well, I might just fall for his horse, really. I'm not looking for anyone apart from you. Oh, now, don't get that stuff all over the place the way you did last time. I won't, Mother. I'm a tidy man. Oh, are you now? Aye, and a lucky one, too. <laughs> I was just thinking about Bob and Morag in Inverdarach. When they thought they were playing a trick on me at the Tapsdales, they were really doing me a favour. Oh, is that so? Aye, it is, aye. Oh, that chap I bought's going to give me the best crop of lambs I've had for years. How can you be sure of that? Oh, I just know it, Mother. Aye, he's a grand beast, and we're bound to have a good spring this year. <laughs> Don't count your lambs before they've been born. Mother, when you've been looking after sheep as long as I have, you don't need men from the department with their, their white coats and their newfangled scanners and so on to tell you when a tub's done a good job of work for you. You know, there are times when I wish I was as sure of anything as you seem to be about everything. It's a gift, Mother. Just a gift. Ah, there we are, then. Right, I'd better get away. Oh, is that my piece? Aye. Cold bacon, chutney and raspberry jam. Oh, good. My favourite. Oh. oh, do go. I'll you the next Been having trouble with him lately. None. It bothers me. Why? Well, a man like Snedden, it's just the calm before the storm. It certainly isn't a natural state of affairs when he isn't causing trouble. Don't you think it just possible that he might have reformed? <sighs> Never. Even remotely possible. Now, the only way we'll get any peace from our Mr. Snedden is if we get shot of him. Find some way of getting him out of Little Fella. It's a bit drastic, isn't it? I'm hoping the man will lose his job. Rory, the people in Glendarrick estate are like my family. What would you do if your family were threatened? 
Archie's still at it. When's he going to be finished? <laughs> if you ask me, he was finished yesterday. I think he's just putting off going back to the big house in case they've got some work for him. Probably. Alice, <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, Archie. Join your dinner, eh? Smells good. Mince. Aye, mince. Hard work fairly gives a man an appetite. You were only laying in a bit of cable. Only? Listen, handling this stuff is dicing with death. If you knew the danger you were in from this old worm, you wouldn't have had a decent night's sleep. Look, I wish you'd stop talking about it, Archie. Make my flesh creep. I'm here to tell you, Alice, this was a death trap. Don't! I'm fed up hearing about it. Aye, wait and see Dougal. Then you can sit and bore each other into a state of stupefaction. <laughs> Dougal, what's he been saying? Ah, oh, that tuppy board. Never stops talking about it. Oh, he's just getting back at you, Bob, for trying to make a fool of him. <laughs> I'm serious, Alice. He actually thinks he's got super tough. He's never done boasting about its prowess. <laughs> Aye, well, all I can say is that mince smells great. Yeah, I want Fiona be expecting you back. She's at the horse market, so she'll know whether I'm back or no. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, of course, uh, living on your own like I do, you know, you hardly ever get a decent meal. Oh, no, 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 it's true, Bob, you see. You can't even bother cooking just for yourself. What I usually do... All right, Archie. Sit down and have your lunch. Nice piece of horse flesh. I was looking at him earlier on. I'm surprised you're interested, Mr. Snedden. Rather puts paid to one of my theories. And what one's that? That there has to be some good in anyone who likes horses. Perhaps you just don't know anything about them. <laughs> that would give them a good laugh back where I come from. I've done me a fair bit of uh, jumping and racing over the years. And there's very few has beat me at either. So there's something else for you to be surprised at. Yes, well, I'm amazed. Incredulous, in fact. My housekeeper, uh, you know, Mrs. Russell. She was saying something very interesting about horse racing just the other day. More surprises? I wasn't aware that Mrs. Russell was an expert in the subject. Oh, she isn't, but... Uh, she does know a bit about the daft local customs you have around Glendarrick. She was saying that in the old days, there was a horse race every year between the owners of Glendarrick House and Letter Fallock. Yes, there was. That all stopped my grandfather with too old. If you'll excuse us. Some folk have the nerve to write to these agony aunties. I mean, some of the things they want advice on are really rather personal. <laughs> you wouldn't be reading them if they weren't. <laughs> That's very <laughs> true. <laughs> ah, still, it's nice to see them out together again. Who? Fiona and Rory. Oh, what's that got to do with agony columns? Well, it's the sort of thing you find in them, isn't it? Do you think he has found someone else? Worried, Glendara. <laughs> you know, try as I might, I just can't see our Fiona sitting down to write anything like that. Mm, maybe not, but you must admit it's a while since they've seen each other. Oh. Mm. Hi. Oh. What's this, Euphemia? Skiving again, eh? Come on, come on, chop, chop. There is work to be done. There is dust to be rearranged. Coming from you, that's And is that. your work at the tailor's finished already? Correct. Oh, I really put my back into that. Ah, well, of course they are friends. Oh, now, what a job. I had to rewire the whole house. I'll probably save their lives. Only, no, no being technically minded, they'll not appreciate that. Aye, the day I did a good job for the tailors. And uh, doubtless a good job for yourself. Well, there's always the personal satisfaction of seeing a job well done. Especially if there's a bit of personal profit as well. Why are you always determined to look for the worst side of human nature? Ah, uh, with you, Archie, it's not so much a look, it's a glance. Well, how much did you make out of it? <laughs> Beer money. I managed to get the wire from a chum in a a wee bit below the going rate. I knew it. Listen, I deserve a wee bit extra, for initiative. For cut price wire? Ah, oh, da, da, da. That was the best of stuff. Oh, are you glad you came? It's a nice surprise, yes. The pangs of hunger are making themselves felt. Oh, I'm sorry, is that the time? Go on about lunch. I know where we can have a nice. Ah, oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. 
You're very adhesive today, Mr. Sneddon. We were just going for lunch. I won't take a minute. I just want a wee word with you. Yeah. I was thinking it would be a good idea to revive that old race between Good Derek and Venerfarrick. What do you think, folks? A sporting occasion, eh? Well, I don't see how we can, since Letter Fallock is an absentee landlord. I suppose I'd just have to stand in for him. Now, that wouldn't do now, would it? Why not? Well, for one thing, the winner gets to buy the loser's horse for half its value. Didn't Mrs. Russell tell you? I can't say she did. Well, there we are. I can't see your employer being very happy about you losing one of his horses. <laughs> I don't intend to lose. Say the race was on. Who'd be riding for Glendarek? Well, I would, of course. Well, there's no of course about it, from what I've heard. What have you heard, Mrs. Thing? That you have a knack of falling off horses. You did yourself an injury the last time, didn't you? Yes, well, that happened once when I tried to jump an impossible fence. Really? I wouldn't have thought that a good horsewoman would even try the impossible. Fear no, lunch. Anyway, wouldn't be fair to race against you now that you've lost your nerve. And who says I've lost my nerve? Well, you spent some time in the funny farm, didn't you? That was an extremely offensive remark, Ned. Oh, no offense intended, sir. No, that's all right, Rory. Well, Mr. Snedden, I'm quite prepared to revive the race on the traditional day. But only with the traditional terms. The loser sells his horse cheap. Or hers. Suits me fine. Was that wise? It doesn't stand a chance. Change. Oh, thanks. Are you still here? You can see that I am. Here. What are you doing with Mr. Murdoch's dog magazine? The crossword. He'll go crazy. He'll... I take it you don't want to buy this. No, really. It's dead boring. Here, do you know how to spell Doberman Pinscher? Never mind how you spell it. Look at the mess. Oh, I was going to rub it out again. Oh, leave the lassie alone, Brian. He never does the crossword. Leave it Listen, have you got nothing better to do with your time than hang around here scribbling on the stock? No, I haven't. What is there to do in a place like Glendara? Well, I find plenty. Hi, but you're kind of old. Uh, and I'll have less of your lip. But I know what she means, Brian. There isn't a lot here for the youngsters to do. Well, no more than there was when we were her age. Well, that's true, I suppose. And what did you do? Uh, well, there was lots of things. There was a choir. Well, there isn't a choir now. Uh, and there was the Dramatic Society. We don't have one now. And we used to have dances once a month. There aren't any now. Carol, you are not being constructive. Well, there isn't anything now. OK, plenty for the older folks. W-R-I and that sort of thing. But unless you've got one foot in the grave, there is nothing. Now, listen, what, young lady. We used to make our own entertainment when we were your age. We didn't wait to be spoon-fed. We can't exactly run a dance on our own, can we? I mean, well, where would we hold it? Out in the fields in the middle of winter? Mm -hmm, that's true. There's only the hall. I don't see Mrs. Mack letting you have that for dances. Well, you never know until you ask. Oh, I don't have to ask. I know what she'd say, body rubbing. That's what she'd call it. <laughs> no comment. Mrs. Blair, you're a member of the community council. Could you not get them to do something about it? Well, I, I don't know, Carol. Or are the young folk not members of the community as well? Well, I might as well away home now. I thought Fiona would be back before now. Well, I'm glad she is, not She'd probably have found me a job to do. <laughs> and I'm still whacked from that pile of work I got through for the tailors. Well, that was this morning. You've been sitting there recovering for the past four hours. Lorna, I'm not so young as I used to be. True. Oh, I can still put in a good day's work with the best of them. It's just I take longer to recover. Oh. <laughs> Lorna, a word in the office, please. Now. Here, something's up. Do you notice he's not with her? Who? Rory. The man has to work sometime, Effie. And so do you, Lorna, so you'd better get in there. A wee nib looks in a bad mood. <laughs> yes, sir. What's the matter with her? Is there something wrong? Snedden. Oh. Uh, what about him? He wants to revive the letter fella Glendale race. Race? Horse race. Oh, that. Yes, he'll be riding for letter fella and I'll be riding against him. Right, Lorna. I want you to send him a letter. 
asking him to confirm it in writing or shut up. Lorna, are you all right? Right, Donald, there's your juice. Now, come on, let's go and clear the other fire. Yeah? Right, be careful not to spill it. So, Archie's got the wiring fixed. Mm -hmm. Not before time. Well, I don't care how long he took, as long as he made a thorough job of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, he took long enough fixing that roof there, but I don't know how thorough a job he made of it. Well, didn't you go up and take a look? She wouldn't let me. She knew fine what would happen if you did go up. Last time you put your foot right through it, and that's what caused all the trouble in the first place. I don't suppose it matters how long Archie took. It doesn't really affect her since the estate pays his wages. Aye, but there's the overheads. Ah, well, it would be, with a roof. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the amount of tea the man drinks. It just about ruined us. Ah, you're right. You know, you could save hundreds of man hours if you could just fit him up with one of these intravenous drips and fill it up with tea. <laughs> Still, it's good to know that the place is safe now. Mm -hmm. He said that the old wiring was rotten and bare. Mm -hmm. I mean, the house could easily have caught fire, and then where would we have been? <laughs> you know, this place was wired just about the same time as the cottage. <coughs> Maybe it's time the croft was rewired as well. I'll order a crate of tea bags. <laughs> yourself, Mr. Snedden. It is. I'm surprised to see you here at this time in the morning. This is the time of Lake Glendarek the best. You don't see any of the people. So you're just taking a stroll then? I'll let you into my confidence, Sergeant. If you promise to forget anything I've told you. Well, that depends. The truth is, I'm meeting a lady. And I'm sure you wouldn't want me to be indiscreet enough as to mention her name. That's none of my business, Mr. Snedden. I'm glad you think that way, Sergeant. Mrs. Mack will be very relieved to hear it. 